Hello everyone, in this video we're going to walk through a couple of different routers and see if they're going to fit in this guy here, my Shapoku XXL Pro. Um, this thing, I, I set my Shapoku up and I'll admit, I am not the sharpest tool in the shed when it comes to belts, uh, tightening things up and, you know, um, mechanical properties and stuff like that. Um, the Shapoku... Uh, Pro was advertised as one of the most user-friendly units, and there's plenty of people on YouTube that do great work with them. So I thought, hey, I'll expect a few problems along the way, but, you know, this is a treat for me. I work really hard. I wear so many hats at my employer. Um, do a lot of stuff. It's a nice reward for me. Well, I assembled it. It, it was a great experience. I assembled the Shape Oka within, I would say, about two hours. The most difficult thing was uh, these belt things, these tails on these things, which side is up, which side is down, uh, that kind of stuff, because they have you take them apart so you can fit the power cord in them. Um, but then I also saw uh, on YouTube some people weren't even using those anymore. I don't know why, but maybe it had something to do with my experience. So this is the router that you pay for uh, as an optional unit. Um, comes like this. Um, and this is going to be important for what I'm going to show you in the video here. Uh, it has their branding on it, Carbide 3D. And I used this two times. Now, user error, full, full disclosure there. I didn't know what I was doing. And um, I chewed through my material, and but I had the lowest speed spindle. So somehow this router didn't like that. Uh, it seized up, and I can't get it to turn back on. Uh, I tried different outlets, and I tested the outlets that I've been using, and other devices work just fine in them. Um, the customer service, uh, gave me some advice on how to fix it, but I'm like, well, you know what, maybe later, maybe later, because, you know, I'm going to take this thing apart, won't know how to put it back together, not, not very user-friendly there, um, so we'll, you know, investigate that later, or I'll give this to somebody as a paperweight, we'll see. I do like the fact that they give an, a really long cord, though, um, but... <clears throat> and then I decided to go out and see if I can get another router. And the thing that I want to show you here is the Master Force Digital Compact Router. Let's see if this thing fits in there. It looks really similar. I'll, I'll show you that. So the Master Force here, it comes like this in a box, but then it comes in a nice little case. Most people are going <laughs> to cross the case and put the, the router on some French cleat system and store it, whatever, or keep it in here uh, as it will. But I wanted to show you a little bit about this Master Force Digital Compact Router. I like it for a couple of reasons. There's some lights on it, um, some different bells and whistles. Won't need this for the router, CNC. Um, the cord um, is, is really long as well. When I looked at this, I was thinking, hey, uh, this Carbide 3D and Menards with the Master Force line, buy from the same Chinese factory and then they just put their own unique markings on because this cord is long as well now it is a little more rubbery um, than the Shapoku the Shapoku is more glossy I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that but master force here Shapoku there um, and such um, where the Shapoku has a hard plastic there uh, there's a little bit of a softer grip here um, and it comes with this thing already on there you just pop it off real simple and let's take a look side by side now okay so we got similar situations here <laughs> i would call these exact models other than the spit polish on them i mean look down to there look down to there um you got the same deal here um <laughs> master force seems a little bit lighter but you know i it's negligible if it is um, let's look here. Um, you've got the digital, or the, not the digital, you can turn it here, turn it there, and then this will have a little display on it. That's why I bought this. I thought this would be nice, uh, to have a feature like that as well on there. Um, so I don't know where the, I, th I thought there was going to be a light that came down so you could see better, but I don't see how that's happening. They might have just meant the LED right in there here. So, but... For all intent and purpose, I, I think these look similar. 
um, and, and probably made by the same factory. A couple of different additions here, uh, there. Oh, here's the lights. So here, here's the tiny lights there. The Shepuku does not have that feature. Um, they're both the same price, $80. Let's just plug this in. See, it works right away. Okay, works right away. Let's take that out and put in the Shepoko to prove to you that it's not working after just two uses. Did not drop it on the floor, didn't do anything of that regard. And uh, customer service basically said, hey, take it apart and put some new parts in it. I'm like, okay, thanks. Um, I know it's a great company, but, you know, I'm like, come on, give me some more than that. Um, don't make me, I, I spent $3,000 on your tool. Don't send me to YouTube videos that other people have made. <laughs> um, I spent $3,000 on your tool. Okay. So a little, little, got a little beef with that. Um, probably work, we're, I'll work through my anger issues there. And I'm sure I'm going to love this tool once I get it reset. But, you know, not everybody's an expert. Not everybody, you know, like this was a, a present for me to treat myself well for hard work. And, you know, maybe I should have bought a different model, something simpler, uh, smaller, gone with a shark or something through Rockler. Don't know. But uh, this is what I have. And so I'm going with. I mean, fortunately, I have money saved up, right? Like I work hard. Um, got a nice job, different things like that, that I can take a hit. I can take a hit. Not everybody can do that. Okay. So opening up the Makita, one thing you notice, no bag. No bag in the Makita. Um, you open up the box here. Just set that there. Open up the box. Got a guide rail. And got some wrenches. Okay. Uh, Master Force um, has the wrench in the bag already. And it's got a couple of other extra pieces there. Mainly for the um, sit up here, the guide here. So, uh, negligible. Um, honestly, I think the Master Force looks nicer. I like the bag, but like I said, most people are just going to pitch that kind of stuff. Um, so let's take a look at the Makita here. Um, again, looking similar. I mean, I know they all mimic each other, right? Like, But uh, let's take a look at the Makita. Very similar. Uh, here's the uh, Carbide 3D. Very similar. Um, some different parts there, different styles. Um, Makita uh, has a bigger switch on it. Up here is where you turn the dial. You, on the carbide, you turn it over here. Um, and here's the Master Force side by side as well. There. Okay. So, uh, very similar setups. Um, I personally like the dark of the carbide 3D and the Master Force over the Makita's. Uh, harder to read um, in there, but uh, it is what it is. Um, Shake Boku reasonably didn't come with. Well, the fact that Makita cost a hundred dollars, Master Force eighty bucks, Carbide three Ds uh, cost eighty bucks. Um, did not get anything like this, of, and of course I wouldn't because they're trying to protect their profit margins. Uh, have a lower cost solution, have their own brand on it. They don't have to worry about marketing like a Makita does. But at the same time, hey, my, I mean, Makita, Makita gave me a, a nice little thing here. So, um, won't use it for that purpose, but just as a comparison here. Um, I've been in business a long time, and I know exclusive brands, private label brands. The idea there is um, you can get the same manufacturer over in China to produce some things, or Taiwan, if you're lucky, because Taiwan does produce better goods in general, better factories. But... Um, the idea is then you can charge just a little bit less than the name brand, but your costs are a lot lower because you don't have the manufacturing, the licensing. Um, you don't have all the research and development costs that, that are in all that. So you can charge a little bit less because you, you have a little bit of less cost and your margins are higher on that kind of stuff. Um, that said, oh, let's, uh, let's make sure this works right out the gate uh, just for uh, being fair. The cord looks similar. Mm. Um, to the Master Force, um, not glossy um, as well. I, I'm, I'm going to assume that these are all made in the same factory, but uh, maybe not. Um, certainly the same, similar models. Some of them have different product innovations than others. But uh, let's go ahead here. Um, 
The only one I don't have is the DeWalt and the Bosch, you know, um, and a Matavo, but, um, you know. Okay, there we go. And we'll turn it on here. And turn it off. Okay. Um, there you go. Uh, there's no lights on the bottom of this one. The Master Force does have the lights. Um, so that's just a quick review and a little bit of my uh, biased opinion here. I'm, I'm sure I'm going to love this tool once I wrap my head around it and I uh, move beyond the growing pains here. Um, so the uh, main part of this video was to show you that these things look very similar. Um, design and scope fits in there like a glove. Master Force. From Menards. Obviously we know that the Makita one does because they tell you to buy the Makita. There it is. Fits like a glove. And there's your Shape Oko right here. Carbide 3 d There it is. Fits like a glove. Um, so now you know. Now you know. You don't have to rush out and maybe get a higher quality one. If you're going to spend $3,000 on a tool, maybe you should ensure that you have a good quality one or one that you're going to like with the different features on it such as the LED lights.